<sighs> I cannot believe I'm about to do this again. Now, I'm going to be doing this off camera a number of other times with, you know, other characters, you know. You know, uh, I've already done the one other warlock. Um, but there's a couple of other, you know, death knights and a couple other druids that I'll be doing this uh, quest with again. But I actually ended up deciding, okay, fine, I'll do this one last time. I don't need to reshow the unholy death knight one again. Um, since there's really nothing much to add to that. Um, what really decided made me decide to go ahead and just go through with this is a couple things. One, there is a unique intro to this quest for specifically for the Balanced Druid, uh, where you are called to meet someone who's going to give you the weapon, and that's when the Dark Riders intervene, and we go to Karazhan. The other is that this weapon is so synonymous with the worgen that it's almost you know like there's no other in my opinion better perfect fit for this weapon and this quest than a worgen druid now this is not my original worgen druid that i made long ago when i first downloaded this game several years ago uh that druid has been lost to time i actually uh ended up recreating this character um, in fact, uh, no, wait, no, this is not the same one. I was going to say this is the one you saw in my starter zone playlist, but no, I realized that was a different one that's been, uh, that was deleted afterwards. Um, but I decided I, you know, I just thought the idea of having a worgen druid was just so fitting that I just, you know, I decided to add one to my list of characters here. And it's just, as I said, you cannot talk about the worgen as a race, you know, the curse of the worgen and such without talking about that weapon right there, the Scythe of Elun, which we are going to get in this video. It's, the, there would not be a Worgen curse without the Scythe of Elun. And of course, it does have to do with the Wild God, aka the Loa of the Wolves, Goldrin. But yeah, it's Much just, it's, there's no other better perfect fit uh, for this than, um, for this weapon and this quest than with a Worgen Druid. And you'll even see where the, the boss fight with Aridin at the end will actually be different because, well, of what the Scythe of Elune does. After all, each of the three different boss fights with the, um, with the Uthalesh Apocalypse and the Scythe of Elune is a different fight because of the different weapon that he uses. But anyways, held for safekeeping by Toronda, the High Priestess of Elune, the Scythe of Elune carries a long and unsettling history for druids. Tied to the origin of the Worgen on Azeroth, the scythe is said to possess untold lunar power for the druid with balance enough to keep control. We need only to convince Toronda's people that you are worthy to keep it safe in the battles to come. It's even extra fitting because during the Worgen starting area, the questline, you actually encounter night elf druids who help you come to terms with being able to gain control of the curse of the Worgen so that you can be able to have this ability to shape back and forth between human form and Worgen form. Hey, look, a human druid. We can actually have human druids now. I'm, j I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. What are we doing as a human? Let's go back. <laughs> What do you ask of nature? Go with Cenarius's blessing. Elunadori, I must speak with you at once. Narlex, what's up? My life for Kalimdor. I have received word that Taronda herself has authorized the release of a great artifact, the Scythe of Elune to aid our cause. Valorn Stilbo, ha Stilbo has agreed to give up the weapon, which he has kept as part of an investigation into the cursed worgen of Duskwood. I believe that you, champion, will be our best hope at wielding its power without succumbing to the animal rage that ebbs within. I mean, I would certainly hope so, Narlex, being that I am already a worgen and I already have to constantly deal with this on a daily basis, but then again, that was also helped uh, by those druids that we encountered back in Gilneas. You must go to Duskwood and take up the scythe against our foes. May you follow me. The Dream Grove has its own gate to the Dreamway. Through it, you can travel to the far corners of Azeroth. 
I find it funny that Narlex has the high mountain um, stag form as a night elf. But then again, I'm also, as a worgen, I'm using a cheetah, so. Clearly, Narlex went to the barbershop and changed his form. So as I mentioned before, you can go to a number of different places because of this streamway. One of them is this one to Duskwood. I am extremely familiar with this one because this is the one I take on a weekly basis to go to the Molten Core with my main druid to get that last piece of the set. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I can actually show you because I'm on a druid. <sighs> Gosh, I cannot believe I can't get this piece to drop. But then again, it's Molten Core. Nothing drops in Molten Core. <laughs> Nothing that you want, right? Where is it? Where is it? Where? Here it is. This one piece right here, Scenario Investments, Golmag the Incinerator. He refuses to drop this piece for my Druid. Oh, he's dropped it for other characters I've had in there, other classes. But he doesn't drop it for my Druid. I get so sick of farming that every week just for this one piece. Now, what's great about this is I can run straight to him and kill him and then leave. I don't have to fight other bosses to get to him like I would have to if I was, say, trying to get the, the pants for this set here and having to constantly go after Ragnaros. I can just go straight to Golmag and leave. But anyways. And yes, you can, of course, go into cat form. You can stealth, and you can just go straight there. And yes, I'm using the flaming cat form because of course I am. But oh my gosh, I get... S it's funny. I've gotten Sulphurus, and I've gotten Thunder Fury. And yet, I keep going back there for some of these transmog sets, because look, I have one piece left to finish the set. I may as well try and get it, right? And yet, it keeps refusing to drop. He keeps dropping everything else except that one piece I need. You know? Oh. Oh. Um... I was not expecting this. Oh wait, that's right. So, just as a, so, in case you, <laughs> I should remind everybody once again, it is the 16th anniversary of World of Warcraft, which means certain world bosses from back in the days of vanilla have respawned, basically. So we're supposed to go right here for the quest, and it's just funny. All of a sudden, I look over here and I see this big world boss in front of the gateway. Because remember, back in vanilla, these things didn't actually work. They were here, but they didn't work. We couldn't use them. And it's just like, oh, uh, don't, don't mind me, Amaris. Don't mind me. I'm just going to go over here. Just, just ignore me, okay? Our champion arrives. We have been sent by Tyrande. Burying a weapon that may turn the tide of this war. You must take up the scythe of Elune, champion. May its power serve you well. So. We've got some sentinels. We even have named sentinels. Doressa. Misara. Belisra Starbreeze, a priestess of the moon. And Valorn. And it's like, oh, hey, look. He's just going to hand us the scythe. Okay. We'll just pick it up. And that'll be that. You know? Well met, champion. Are you ready for the burden that you must bear? Though it goes against my better judgment, it is Toronda's wish that the Scythe of Elune be brandished once more against the new Legion threat. It is a small comfort to see it wielded by a keeper of the balance, such as yourself, as well as a worgen, because of course there's no other more fitting race to wield the Scythe of Elune than a worgen. Oh, excuse me. Know that the last time the scythe was wielded, it resulted in great calamity. You must be vigilant to contain the bestial wrath that ebbs within. Yes, I am already dealing with that. I'm a worgen. <laughs> you don't have to warn me about that. I constantly already deal with that. With those words in your, in your heart, take the scythe and bring its fury against our foes. May the light of a loon protect you. Sure. Thank you, Valorn. The scythe belongs to Karazhan. Ah! Aridin! No! He has the scythe! After him! He's gone. I'm sorry, Balistra. Just straight up backstabbed him. 
forlorn. That was a dark rider. But how did they reach us here? Under the protection of the grove. Not to mention there's a world boss right there. How do you get by? I cannot believe that the Dark Riders found us here. Long have they hunted the scythe to sate their lust for the artifacts of Azeroth. We thought we would be protected within the grove. Yeah, but we are, like, right next to Karazhan, so j I'm just saying. I cannot be Oh, sorry. And now Valorn is gone. You must become the hunter, Felarina. Seek the Dark Riders and recover the scythe. We last encountered them near Manor Mismantle in Duskwood. Start your search there. Oh, and Felarina, bring justice to Valorn. The riders must pay. Alright. So, there is a little difference here when you get to the manor as a druid compared to when you go there as a death knight as a, and as a warlock. Because, of course, we are going to run to our favorite priest there, right? Revel Cost, right? <laughs> See, the thing is, when we go there as the Death Knight and the Warlock, he's, of course, immediately hostile, like, oh, A Death Knight or a Warlock, you will not kill, you know, finish me off, for I, you know, b wield the light, you know. Like, he gets all defensive, because... A, a, a warlock or an, a and a death knight just walked up to him. Of course he's going to be all defensive. But he sees a druid. And he goes, uh oh. Well, you'll see here. Now, he's dealing with, like, we find him, like, near a feral worgen corpse in the manor. So he's, so, and then he sees us. And he's like, oh, a druid. Oh, I think I see what's going on here. By the way, in case you're wondering, no, I don't have the Moonkin form because this character is only at level 14. And we don't get Moonkin form until like level 20 something. First the Nightbane are driven mad, and now a druid comes to investigate Manor Mistmantle. This can only mean the Scythe of Elune has returned to Duskwood, and the Dark Riders cannot be far behind. Tell me what you seek, druid, and I may be of assistance. What so yeah, Feral Nightbane. So the thing is, when we start here as either a Death Knight or a Warlock, he will be extremely reluctant to aid us because, of course, he expects us to perhaps double-cross him or just out outright attack him, which you actually can do as a Death Knight or as a Warlock. Just straight up attack this guy. Instead of try to reason with him and convince him to help you because he doesn't want to aid a death knight or a warlock as he's, you know, because he's a priest. He's like, you you stand against everything that the light represents, you know, stuff like that. But he doesn't see that in a druid. As a druid, he's immediately like, oh, well, hello there. It's very nice to meet you. How may I help you? I like that there is this acknowledgement from a, from a you know, like a light using priest like Revel Cost who immediately is like he'll be hostile to you as a class like a death knight as a warlock but as a druid he immediately kind of softens up and is more willing to aid you expecting that you're not someone who's going to actually try to harm him so i was correct and the scythe is your quarry know that in order to retrieve it we must do what no denizen of duskwood has ever attempted we must hunt the dark riders I have been tracking them for some time since my encounter with them while hunting down the wolf cult. They are a blight upon these lands, and they hold no right to the artifacts that they hoard. If we wish to recover this artifact, we will need to find their lair. Fortunately, I may have just the clue we need. In my previous confrontation with your foe, I was able to see a glimpse into their past. Granted blessed vision by the Cloak of Purity, I saw the Dark Riders for who they once were. Come, you must go to Aridan's camp in Deadwind Pass. I can explain its significance along the way. I am the Light's Vengeance. It seems you've been followed. Dark Riders! Yeah, you can see that Death Knight player is just straight up attacking him. Now, yes, there is the other quest here about Tobias Mismantle um, with the regular questing in Duskwood. But my point still stands, because you can see there that that is a Death Knight who is just straight up attacking Rebel Cost. 
he probably didn't even try the other dialogue options. He just wanted to go ahead and attack him. The battle is won, but there will be more. Quickly, to Aridin's camp! Do you wish to be left behind? Hurry! I'm right behind you, Revel. The Dark Riders were not always like this. They were once a group of traveling merchants. Unfortunately, they crossed the sorcerer Medivh, who cursed them to an eternity of hunting artifacts for him. Look out behind you! I'm out of range. Come on, Revel, let's go. This quest can, of course, sometimes bug because of the different players and such. Combat is impressive. We may yet survive this. Aradin was the first of the Dark Riders, and I believe he leads them now. Do you wish to be left behind? Hurry! Quickly! We don't have time to linger! His camp is still in Deadwind Pass, strangely untouched after all these years. If my convictions are correct, the key to finding the Dark Riders, as well as the artifacts they still covet, can be found there. Riders on our flank! Be ready! It's too far away. Let us press on. We are nearly there. Do you wish to be left behind? Hurry! I would if I had better writing skill. Here, the camp is in this clearing. Let us search it. Let me show you the light. It's strange that the Dark Riders have not followed us here, but I will take whatever boon I can get. I believe that the key to finding the Dark Riders is here somewhere. Let us begin our search. This place is where the merchant Eredin set up camp while he was trying to ply his, his dubious wares to the sorcerer Mediv. It has remained strangely untouched for all this time which leads me to believe that it may still have a connection to its former owner. Help me search the camp. Let's see if we can find something to lead us to the Dark Riders. The light. So, of course, you can check some of the various other things are here. This relic box. This box contains various magical-looking trinkets and baubles. Upon close inspection, these relics appear to be nothing more than clever forgeries. Yeah, they tried to pull a fast one on Mediv, and he didn't take that well. These boots are in surprisingly nice condition for their age. It's odd that they would still be left here after all these years. The compass is old and weathered with a use. It appears to be malfunctioning. The compass arrow is erratically changing direction and never settles at true north. It po points to the thing you want most in this world. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just, I can't resist that joke. The bedding in the tent has been undisturbed for quite some time. Hmm. Now what's this book over here? Ah! You will suffer for your trespass. Turn away now, interloper. The horrors of the past will be I your think undoing. that means we're on the right track. See what you can find in that journal.
dark energy hums from the journal, which appears to be the writings of Aridin, and chronicles his time in Deadwind Pass. One entry in particular stands out. The Nightbane have become restless of late. By the way, this is one of the little differences in this quest, whether you are a Death Knight, a Warlock, or a Druid, where the Texans and what you're looking for will be different, focused on that weapon. Of course, this one focusing on the Nightbane Feral Worgen in this area. Of late, and whispers are abound of the scythe of Elune having left Darnassus. It must be coming nearer, for the Worgen are constantly drawn to it. They will lead me to it. Those cursed night elves think that the weapon is safe in their care. They will soon find how wrong they are. How can the light serve? The Nightbane. If they are in Deadwind Pass, then they can be maybe seeking the scythe as well. Let's split up and try to track them down. We'll see where their trail ends. The light redeems. This is another main difference here is what you go after as either of the three classes. As a balance druid, you go after the, the tracks here of the worgen. <gasps> Feral Nightbane. Hey, Turn away now, get back here. Loper. The horrors of the past will be your undoing. I mean, that's not what I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about having to fight this Sky Shadow here. It would be nice if the other players I saw ran by and aided me in this fight, but whatever. Oh gosh, do I have to fight more than one because they apparently decided to just be here? Alright, fine. Now they show up. Hey, get back here. Ah, I need a target. Scary image. I mean, I know we just had Halloween, but my gosh. There they go. Uh. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm gonna leave that alone. Just gonna ignore that. Oh, hey, Karazan. the cliff. Okay, I'm a druid. I can heal myself. It's one of the things that really helped me get, you know, immediately attracted to the idea of playing a druid. It's like, oh, look, I can do all these things. I can have a different form. I just realized I still have my orca form. I, so I had a friend. She's in my uh, horde guild. She has uh, been upping her inscription. And uh, I was aware of a couple of other glyphs druids could get that focus around a dolphin form. And I asked her about it, and she actually went out of her way to level her rep with the Tortolans to get the recipe in order to not just get for myself, but for other people in the guild. And maybe even use it, you know, I told her she could even do that and sell that on the auction house because I haven't seen 
any of them on the auction house, and I figured plenty of players would be wanting to get those glyphs to add them to their collection of travel aquatic forms. So she was nice enough to give me those, and so thank you very much uh, to my friend, who I'm going to go ahead and just not drop the name, just, you know, to protect her privacy. Let me show you the light. The worgen appeared to be drawn in the catacombs beneath Karazhan. Could it be? This sewer gate leads to the catacombs underneath Karazhan. I've never paid it much attention, but it seems to be where the Nightbane are being drawn to. To think the Dark Riders may have been under our noses this entire time. Come, let us see where this leads. I Go in ahead, Druid, and I will join you inside. So, I may have criticized the reusage of this quest in my okay. original video of this. There is a dark energy emanating from the spirits of this place. We had best not get too close. Let me go ahead and say uh, a couple of things that I want to kind of retract on that I was saying back then. Now, I'm still not in favor of the idea of reusing these quests. However, I do understand that uh, they were basically crunched for time and didn't have the time to really flesh out a couple more extra unique quests. So, and really try to kind of like, you know, polish this and really flesh this out to really kind of add to the idea that all three classes in lore were doing this while also trying to possibly come up with a unique quest for the other ones like i'm sure they perhaps want to come up with a couple of other unique quests maybe for either um the unholy death knight or these stairs seem to go forever or either balance or affliction because I'm sure they wanted to keep this for at least one of the three classes. Because it's the thing is, it's not a bad quest. I really do, you know, like the, you know, this is a fun quest. You know, especially when we get here to Karazhan. And I do like that there is unique stuff for each class in here to how to deal with what Aridin throws at you. It's just that whole, oh my gosh, I've already done this type of feeling, you know what I mean? By the way, I love that he just used a, um, what's that ability called for priests? Holy Fire? Where you call it down and you put the dot on there? I love that he did that, just to re-emphasize that he is a priest. Hey, level 15. And now we're going to go with one of my favorite talents for a balance druid, Nature's Balance, where out of combat I generate astral power. May not be the best talent, but it's my favorite. The way is blocked. Intruders! You will go no further. Hold! Those spirits he's controlling look like they'll rip us apart. We have to figure out a way to get past without being torn asunder. So, this is another cool, unique thing about this quest based on what class you are. If you're a death knight, you use anti-magic shell and walk right through because it, you know, it's, you know, makes you immune to their damage. As a warlock, you use demonic gateway to just simply zoop, teleport to the other side. As a druid, you instead use solar beam. Hold on. Ugh. That is so stupid. I don't know, it's like, why? Why is that somehow interfering with that little interface thing there? Why? Anyways. As a druid, you instead use Solar Beam to silence him from constantly, you know, casting that. I just think that's pretty awesome, actually. Conservator, do your duty! Your presence is unauthorized. Removal protocols engaged. Keep your guard up. I fear Eridan is not done with us yet. The artifact chambers look to be just- Over here! Is this the relic you seek? Indeed it is. So as I said in the other uh, video, you know, there's a number of things in here, you know, really cool little, um, you know, uh, doodads, I guess, is a term I could use that I've heard used 
by others where Blizzard will put little things just kind of scattered around that are cool little either Easter eggs or they'll, um, you know, references, you know, stuff like this where we go, oh, I know what that is, you know, just, of course, Medivh would have them down here, you know? So this is what you're after. The artifacts of Karazhan belong here. And I will not allow them to be taken away! You have no right to these artifacts, fiend. They must be reclaimed in the name of the light. Your light does not reach here, priest. If you want the scythe, druid, come and claim it. Of course, a little different dialogue if you are either a death knight or a warlock. Sorry, Rebel Cost, I got this. Yeah, you can probably see why I actually enjoy balance a little bit more, you know, more so than, uh, than Feral. Like, it just is like, yep, I can put a dot there, I can just hit you with this, I hit you with this. I guess I'm just saying it's a little bit more my style, and plus, I never feel like I am able to not really do anything or at a lack of resource when it comes to balance compared to Feral. Where at times it's like, oh, I'm out of energy, I can't use this, I can't use this. I'm not trying to bash Feral here, I'm just simply trying to explain why I end up, you know, using and playing balance much more so than I do Feral. Even though I want to like Feral. You are a persistent one. Face the fury of the beast. So he comes at us with the scythe. Very well. If you so thirst for the power of the scythe, then I will show it to you myself. And so he becomes a worgen because he's using the scythe and it kind of overwhelms him. I will ride again. Yeah. He also has a, you know, um, this ability right here, Blood Reap, where he will slash you for a bunch of damage, knocking you back and grants him rage. And it hurts a lot. You definitely have to avoid that. So... But that's one of the main differences, that it actually m turns him into a worgen during the fight. The Scythe of Elu. In the hands of a worgen. Very fitting. It is done. The Dark Riders are defeated. Now I can reclaim these stolen artifacts and return them to their rightful owners. You have proven an unexpected ally. The weapon is yours. Let us hope it can turn the tide in this war. The Dark Riders lost this battle, but I fear they will soon regroup. We had best be gone before they do. What do you need? Today was a great blow against the Dark Riders, and a victory for the people of Duskwood. They are in your debt, as am I. Your assistance against the Dark Riders has proven a great service to the Light. Though our beliefs may separate us, I know that we share one goal. You have allowed me to fill my purpose in returning these artifacts to their rightful owners. And for this, I am thankful. As for the Scythe of Elune, I can think of no safer place than in your care. May it serve you well against the Legion, Felerina. Go with the Light. All right, so we'll just use the, oh. So apparently I can't uh, use that in here. So we'll just hearth back to Dalaran and make our way back to uh, the Dream Grove. Forgot what it was called for a moment there. So, in lore, 
w one of the cool things about why the scythe is designed this way is that the idea is that that blade for the scythe is actually a tooth from Goldrin. Be careful. Not only do we get to uh, revisit and see Goldrin during the Druid quest, but as I also showed in a separate video when I did the Worgen Heritage Armor uh, quest, we actually get to meet Goldrin as a Worgen, um, where Tess is trying to s see whether or not she'd actually want to become a Worgen willingly. And so Goldrin's like, okay, let me show you what it would be like and whether or not it would have actually mattered or made a difference in saving your brother or not. You know, Goldrin is not exactly the nicest guy, but he's not exactly, but he's not like, <laughs> you know, like, you know, evil or anything. Um, he's kind of, how would I describe Goldrin? A little ruthless, but not horrible, you know. He's, you know, you know, he, he's aggressive, he's ferocious. There's a reason why the curse of the worgen from him, you know, it turns you into a feral werewolf type of, you know, creature, you know, beast, you know, that very aggressive, you know, animalistic type of mindset, you know, kind of a reflection of Goldrin, because as, you know, the Loa of wolves, you know, Loa, Loa, wild god, if I say one or the other, that's basically what I mean. So we'll head back to the Dream Grove and then I'll show you some of the appearances that you can get for this. But yeah, of the four weapons that the Druid gets in Legion, this is one of the most relevant in the entire expansion because this is a weapon that has been talked about and referred to and hyped up since Vanilla. Like since Vanilla, wow, back, back in the day, this is a weapon that has been hinted at and talked about and referred to and we finally actually get it in legion and it was just kind of awesome that we had this iconic weapon in lore finally in our hands like it's not it may not be as well known to the general player base as say the ashbringer or doomhammer or frostmourne but it's still extremely relevant. Like I said, if you are a worgen, there's no way you should not know ab about this weapon since it's basically responsible for the, you know, the worgen actually being a thing. Which is why when people ask, you know, what's a good uh, class to play as a worgen, I always say druid because of how relevant, you know, it is to their their history along with you getting this weapon right here, the scythe of a loon. It's extremely fitting. We okay, blah, 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 blah. Plant the seed. And water. Look for an ideal spot on the hill behind us. Good. This seed holds magic from when the world was young. This will prove very useful. Okay. So. Actually, hold on. So. The ability of the Scythe of Illumina used to grant was the New Moon spell, which would deal damage and then transform into a more powerful spell and do even more damage. Like, it would be, a, you know, just, a, you know, a New Moon and then, a, you know, some damage, a, a Half Moon, more damage, and then, a like, a Colossal Full Moon, which did a ton of damage. It was pretty cool. So, this is the baseline appearance. Color tints here as well. This is the upgrade appearance, the Envoy of Goldrin. It's a little shorter in length, but a little bit more animated and such for completing the campaign. Lunar Call. This is the Balance of Power appearance here, where it actually looks like 
an you know, it you know looks very much like an actual moon right there. Very cool looking. Nightmare's Affliction. This is a very cool looking scythe uh, appearance here, as if it was corrupted by the em by the 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 Emerald Nightmare. You see that with the handle there? Yeah, very, very cool looking. I don't recall what the uh, Mage Tower appearance is. I do have the secret appearance. I will go ahead and, hold on, let me go ahead and equip this, and I will go ahead and transmog to show it to you. Um, shop, browse. It's this right here. This is the secret appearance. Where the, the, the scythe, the blade, becomes kind of like, it's made of, like, lunar flame energy. It's almost like a lightsaber in that regard. I I hate to make that comparison, but it's one of the only closest things I could come up with to kind of describe how this is basically working, you know? It's pretty awesome looking. Getting this, however, is a bit of a pain. So, in order to obtain this secret appearance right here, let me tell you what you need to do. First, you have to get exalted with the Dreamweavers faction here in Val Shara. This, you know, the faction in this zone right here. So you have to get exalted with the Dreamweavers in this zone here. Then you have to go to the dungeon over here, the, um, the thicket, what, well, you know, um, uh, hold on. Then you have to go to Darkheart Thicket. And you have to get it to drop. It's an RNG drop. Uh, or no, Hold on, I just realized. There's one more step. The reason you have to get exalted with the Dreamweavers is because you have to buy two halves of the appearance. One half is from the um, Dreamweavers uh, faction emissary uh, where you get access to actually purchasing it if you get exalted with that faction. The other half is an RNG drop from this guy right here, Archdruid uh, Gladalus. So you have to constantly go back and forth into this dungeon and farm this guy. You can do this on normal. Just, you just walk in, get to him, kill him, and then leave, rinse and repeat, until it eventually drops. It didn't take actually that long for, for it to drop for me. It was like, I don't know, like I went back in and did like six times in a row or something like that before it dropped, so... It was just the, you know, the grind of the leveling the rep with Dreamweavers. That was a bit of a pain to acquire this, but I do love this appearance. It, w it was worth it. So so that is, fingers crossed, unless for some re reason I come up, you know, I find some reason to show the unholy one again. <laughs> Heaven forbid. The unholy, uh, well, the uh, balanced druid quest where we go to Karazhan. And that is basically it that I can think of. I'm not redoing the Shaman ones. There's no reason to redo the Shaman ones. I don't really feel the need to do so. Um, so more than likely that while that is it for me reshowing the quest to get the artifact weapons, I will try and show uh, a few of the other campaigns. More than likely the Rogue, the Priest, and the Monk. Are the ones I'm interested in. I decided not to do the the warlock one because while I love the intro and the artifact weapon quest and the order hall itself, the campaign is eh. All because all we really do is just regain the council of the black harvest, and uh, we become the leader. As I mentioned, we also get to pick between two uh, newcomers to be a new replacement on the council in place of the uh, leper gnome. And uh, we then also get to save Canrathad Ebonlock later on. So, but yeah, expect uh, me to make some videos, hopefully, fingers crossed, on reshowing the, on trying to show the monk, rogue, and priest order hall campaigns is what my intention is. And uh, this will be alongside me trying to also do some of the Shadowlands stuff that'll be coming out later on, like the pre-launch event, and then of course the expansion itself when it goes live. So, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this revisit uh, of all these different artifact quests, including ones I'd never showed on camera before, and even some of the ones I redid, like this one. And I will see you guys next time.